Today I'm going to tell you about a defensive stat that is crucial that Oklahoma ranks dead last in and why it really ain't going to matter against Texas and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. So today I'm going to tell you about a crucial defensive stat for Oklahoma for which it ranks dead last and why it really ain't gonna matter against Texas. But first, I got these t-shirts. They say, I'm just here for Baker Cleveland. For the folks who want to support Baker Mayfield as a Cleveland Brown, but don't really want to wear that gaudy orange. I also got this book coming out. It's called Let It Bang. It drops on October 23rd. It's getting a lot of buzz, getting a lot of nice reviews. I'm going to be on NPR and PBS and a lot of other places talking about the book. I'd appreciate it if you pre-order it at rjyoungwrites.com. What's the difference between Texas and Cheerios? One belongs in a bowl, the other does not. Texas is really just northern Mexico, to be honest. Forrest Gump chose Bama over Texas because he wanted the academic challenge. The best coach in the history of Texas Longhorns football won three national titles, 11 conference titles, and played quarterback, defensive back, graduated, and was born in Oklahoma. University of Texas football, the only place in Oklahoma where you name your stadium after a native Oklahoman. All right, so this stat... I'm gonna get to, but first let me lay the groundwork here. Okay, so one of the reasons I'm really just uh about the defensive stats and the conversation around the defense is because number one, I want a great defense. And I want Mike Stoops to be the person that puts that great defense into place. Because hey man, just like everybody else who watched this channel, it'd be nice to see Oklahoma win a national championship in 2018. But my goodness, it almost feels like we're waiting on something. We're waiting on a shoe to drop because look, Iowa State averages 17 points a game and got 27 against Oklahoma. As I'm going to get into, OU's third down defense ain't very good, man. It's actually pretty bad. But before I get into that, here's what you need to know. Oklahoma is 5-0. It means that it is one of the remaining undefeated teams in college football. That's a very, very cool thing. But Kyler Murray and the offense can only do so much. We saw that with Baker Mayfield in the offense last year. And that was with the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. And as much as it pains me to say that John Chavis was onto something when he took a shot at Oklahoma, Oklahoma had the Heisman winner at quarterback and the best offense in college football and still really couldn't get it done against a Georgia team that didn't have a great offense but had an outstanding defense. That has been the common denominator with the recent national champions. They have had outstanding defenses. Not middling defense, not average defenses, not above average defense. Top five in the country defenses. It's one of the reasons why I continue to harp on Oklahoma having an outstanding defense because that is the thing that will not only push Oklahoma over the top, but can begin the role of dynasty, of championship on championship on championship. The offense we know is historic. We know the offense is amazing. We want the defense to be amazing. So I'm going to continue to harp on this subject until the defense is amazing, whether Mike Stoops is the guy or not. And like I said, I want him to be the guy because I want it to happen right now, and he's the defensive coordinator. And not for nothing, but the last time that Oklahoma won a national championship, it wasn't because the offense was outstanding. It was because the defense was a juggernaut. So keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this video. Now, I got my boxers in a bunch this morning because I saw folks holding up the Oklahoma defense as being better than last year's defense. Now, you can point to stats that show that it's a bit better than last year, and you can point to stats that show that it's really not. I'm still very much on track with it's the same sort of defense that we've seen from year to year, but it's better in different ways. For instance, Oklahoma's linebacking core has been outstanding, and I got a video that's going to drop about that. But the thing that worries me is that Oklahoma's defense is still bad in the total defense category. Okay, you're going to call that a junk stat. Fine. What about third down conversions then? Because Oklahoma is only stopping teams 42% of the time when they go for it on third down. Now, it has been pointed out to me that perhaps the teams that Oklahoma is playing are just very good at converting on third down. Well, in the case of Army, that's true. They rank number eight, which is right behind Oklahoma at number seven. And Baylor's pretty good too. They rank number 13. But then you get into the top 100 with Florida Atlantic at 67 and Iowa State at 85. 
And then UCLA is just really bad at converting on third down. They rank number 116. So you got the full spectrum here. Still, Oklahoma is getting beat four out of 10 times on third down. That's too many times. And everybody wants to keep telling me that the Army game is skewed because they run an offense that nobody runs. Whatever, man. You beat the offense that's in front of you. I don't care if they run wing, T, power, I, or air raid. You have to stop the offense because the offense still wants to move the football. But bearing that in mind, Oklahoma is giving up 153 rush yards per game, which is about middle of the pack number 54 and really not bad considering that Army runs the ball almost exclusively and had over 300 yards rushing against Oklahoma. Oklahoma's also given up just 4.8 yards per play which ranks number 32 and is on par with Texas. Now this is where it gets worrisome for me because Alan Kenny wrote a pretty good story on Crimson Cream Machine about Texas's run offense, its rushing offense, and how we're correct to think that Trey Watson is just average, four yards per carry. Keontae Ingram could be good, but he doesn't have enough carries to be registered as good. But the run game is really oriented around Sam Hard G. Ellinger. And again, Kenny came up with this stat. Ellinger has run for 208 yards on 46 carries, when you disallow sacks. Now couple that with the fact that Texas is converting third downs at about the same clip that Oklahoma is allowing them. Texas converts third down at 41%. Oklahoma allows them at 42%. But where this gets dicey is when you get inside the red zone for which Oklahoma ranks dead last. Oklahoma has allowed 16 teams inside the red zone and every time they got there, they have scored. 13 of those 16 are touchdown. Perspective is Florida Atlantic is the only other team to allow 16 scores inside the red zone and is tied for dead last with Oklahoma. And while you might think that could be an edge for Texas, specifically when we're talking about Hard G and his ability to basically be Texas's best running back, it's really not. Texas ranks number 91 in rushing offense and it's tied for number 124 in red zone offense. So you got one of the worst offenses inside the red zone in the country playing one of the worst defenses inside the red zone in the country. Red River shootout, everybody. However, I think this is going to highlight the matchup between Texas's offensive line and Oklahoma's front seven. I think this is going to be a big game for guys like Kenneth Murray Jr., Curtis Bolton, and the linebacking core. And Neville Gallimore could really have a lot to say about how good Texas's run game is on Saturday. So if I'm you, I'm watching for how Texas runs the football. I'm watching for how many third downs they convert. And I'm watching for what happens inside the red zone. Because in a pick em matchup between those two teams inside the red zone, you're going to see somebody's will conquer somebody else's will, specifically running the ball or stopping the run.